Welcome to This Week in Warframe, a series where I keep you updated on the past week of Warframe, from announcements made by DE that don't necessarily warrant their own videos to community fan art posts and updates. So without further ado, let's go over D's announcements and news from the 21st of January to the 27th. Starting off, we had DevStream 105 on Friday, and here is the whole rundown. Now, it was an art and design based stream, therefore there isn't a lot of mechanic based information and more or less just deluxe skins and a lot of that stuff. So, starting it off, we have upcoming deluxe skins. Now, we knew about the Octavia Deluxe skin a while back, but this time they gave us a render of the model with an actual view of what she'll look like, as well as the content that'll be coming in her deluxe skin pack. And that is, of course, a new Cyan Dana and a new Assault Rifle Weapon skin, where the ammo clip will be a hockey puck-like object. Moving on, there is Volvin's Deluxe skin, which in my opinion, this design should be its own Warframe itself, or for Rhino, but it does look really fucking cool, and hopefully it actually turns out like that, unlike the Chroma Deluxe skin that they showcased a while back as well. Moving on, they showed off the Nezha Deluxe skin, as well as started to do the live modelling of that skin, and I think we can all agree that it looks fucking awesome. After that, they gave us information in regards to Tenogen Round 11 Batch 2, which will be coming this upcoming week after this video gets released, and the skins and items that are coming in that round are Octavia's Diva skin, Oberon's Wendigo skin, Harrow Grax, Excalibur Corpora, Trinity Nightess, Saren's Velenosa, Inaros's Kefri Helmet, the Corona Sindana, the Tanaka Sindana, the Diva Polearm skin, and the Tengakan Heavy Blade skin. Now they also announced that Tenocon 2018 will be on July 7th this year. They have a hype site already up and going, so if you want to check that out, a link will be in the description, as well as to the official overview of the dev stream, if you want to read through that and see confirmation. Moving on, the actual designer and creator of Korra showed us their work in progress shots from May 2015 up until May 2017. Now I think we can all agree that it's pretty fucking awesome how the design process works with Warframe, especially with this person's individual experiences. They commented on it during the stream, and hearing his statement and comments regarding the process of Korra was actually really interesting, and I suggest you check it out if you do have the time. But of course they did show off this concept art and the progress they made over the years, but they also showed us the in-game model and alternate helmet of Korra, so that's on your screen right now, as well as showing the weapons that'll be coming with Korra as well. Now her weapons will consist of a sword, which the original artist created a polearm of and converted it into a sword. There's some really cool comments in regards to that as well. And the second weapon is a dart gun, which will cycle through the elements that Warframe has to offer. Before that, they showed us some writable Darjan gameplay of the updated physics and what work they've done since they showed it off in Devstream 104. Going back to the deluxe skins and whatnot, they gave us a sneak peek and view at the upcoming anniversary item, which is Dexcalibur. Now, it will be coming in a skin form instead of an actual Warframe, obviously, and there's the concept art on your screen. Now, they also showed off three new variants of Corpus units, since last year was mainly focusing on the Grenier, so it looks like this year will be Corpus related. Now, the three variants of Corpus units are up on the screen, they'll be cycling, so if you missed them out, just go back a few seconds. But they're up on your screen, and you can let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. Moving on, they gave us a little update in regards to the operators. Now, they have been working on new hair designs and actual good-looking hair from the looks of it, so that's pretty cool, as well as making it so the operator cosmetics can blend together with different types of outfits. Moving on, we had Steve coming onto the stream, and basically updating us in regards to the lighting changes that are currently happening behind the scenes. So on the screen is what Steve brought up and showed us, and you can see a major overhaul in the lighting system. Now this is because the lighting system that they were originally using has become redundant in Autodesk's eyes, so they've discontinued support on that lighting system. As Steve said, they're working and completely making their own lighting system, as you can see, here's a few tweets from Steve in regards to what's happening, and you can see that it's actually really crazy the work they've done with this new system. Now, they were trying to get a new enemy design up on the screen during the dev stream, but in the dev stream 105 overview, they actually put it in there. So what you're seeing on the screen now is an upcoming Grenier enemy for the Plains of Eidolon that will be a part of a new operation or tactical alert coming to the game soon. 
Moving on from DevStream 104, we had update 22.10. Now this update released Mace's Deluxe skin as well as her whole collection, which came with the Pearl of Pistol skin, the Castella Cyandana, and of course that Mesa Deluxe skin. There was also the three Warframe augments that were shown in prime time that consist of Razorwing Blitz, Lasting Covenant, and Larvae Burst. Of course, if you didn't see my video, the Equinox augment has been delayed due to it not going along with what Digital Extremes wanted in terms of the Equinox augment. So they're going back to the drawing board and completely redoing that augment. Now they also made a lot of quality of life improvements, but there was one thing that I didn't cover in my update video, which if you want to know what happened in the update entirely, go watch that update video or just read it yourself. A link to both of those will be in the description. Now what I didn't mention in that update video, because they didn't put it into the patch notes, is that the Archiplasmor has received a nerf, and that is of course to its critical damage on headshot. So what they did, you can read the full paragraph if you want, but just to summarize, they made it so the critical damage from a headshot does not multiply. It does not have the multiplier on it, and therefore it just has the base critical damage. But there is currently a bug at the moment of recording where any headshot damage is now zero. So that is of course a bug and it'll probably be fixed in a future update. So if you want to read the full post regarding the Archiplasma change, it's up on the screen or you can just head to the forum post as I said before and read the whole forum post yourself. After that there was Hotfix 22.10.1 which just fixed vacuum because it was broken for a couple of hours as well as remove three unreleased mods from the mod pack transmutation system. Now if you didn't see Reddit, these mods consisted of Air Blast with a placeholder name of course, which decreased projectile impact damage and increased explosion damage. The second was Moab, which decreased projectile flight speed and increased impact and explosion damage with that plus 24% blast radius. And the final was Fuse, which increased the magazine capacity and fire rate with a plus 24% blast radius, with Fuse being specifically for the Ogress. Moving on, there was Hotfix 22.10.2, .2, which actually included a mining buff. So in this buff, they made it so now you have a 15% chance of getting a rare gem just from being super accurate with that bonus increasing by 3% for every filled gem icon that you have in your mining HUD. So there's a little buff in regards to that. The previous stats were 10% as a base chance and 2% per filled gem icon. Besides that they increased the spectre ability cooldowns and there was fixes of course. Moving on earlier in the week as I stated in last week's episode PS4 and Xbox so consoles in general now have Planes of Eidolon update 22.8.2, .2, as well as a few hotfixes in there as well. So that includes the Will Bounties, the Tenno Pump Action Shotgun, the Warfans, Focus 2.5, as well as a bunch of other content in there as well. So if you're a console player, definitely check out the hotfix and patch notes, as I don't actually cover console content outside of this week in Warframe. Moving on for Tenogen content creators, DE Taylor posted that they are trying to get a Gara template out for you guys, and it will probably come out next week, there's just some issues in regards to how her glass works. After that, there was a new contest announced for the player base, I'll make a separate video that covers everything in regards to that contest, but as you can see on the screen, it is called GIF of the Lotus. And basically, you create a glyph and post it up onto the forums. And if you do want to participate, I highly suggest checking out the actual forum post and reading all the rules and guidelines, following them to the T, and then submitting your entry. Moving on for the contest, for PC players, there will be server maintenance happening on January 29th at 9am Eastern Time for around 3 hours. Now, you will still be able to play, but there may be some issues throughout that time, and Red Tax will just inform you guys if anything serious happens during that time. Moving on to Twitter posts, we have Rebecca coming out on the 23rd saying that they are working on an advanced map when it comes to the Plains of Eidolon, instead of this giant transparency over your fucking screen, which is really shit. So we'll eventually see that hopefully in the future, and hopefully it'll be like other open world maps. Now that is all the relevant DE information that I could gather for this week, so we'll now finish the video up with a few highlights from the community. This time we have all the artwork coming from DeviantArt, and starting it off we have Limbo by Aim Fox. Now you may hate Limbo as a character, but of course this fan art is pretty fucking good.
Moving on, we have some random sketches of Warframes of Mag, Volt, and Nyx by Apple Pie OG. After that, there is an Excalibur drawing by The Art of Recaro, which looks pretty sweet as well. We then have another Excalibur piece by Nite J. Sorry if I got your name wrong. And then we have the Strager Ice Cold Trinity skin by Silfix, which is an artist we also covered in last week's episode. After that, we have a little portrait by Victor X with Frost Prime. And finishing it up, we have Zephyr by Enoch Friedrich which, once again, I probably got the name wrong. Now, those are the community highlights of this week. So if you want to check them out, the artists, the creators, or just the pieces themselves, you can, of course, do so. The links to all the artworks are in the description down below, as well as the sources for everything else that I talk about here today. Now, if you found the video informative, make sure to leave a like. If you think I can improve upon something or you wish to share your opinion on one of the topics that I mentioned here today, you can, of course, do so with a comment down below. And, of course, if you missed out on last week's episode, you can check it out by clicking the annotation on the screen right now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.